Um, we do want to let you know that we have agendas here on the podium. If you haven't already picked one up, you're certainly welcome to, so you can follow along. We've got a pretty full meeting tonight. Um, I do want to remind folks that, uh, that we meet twice a month. The first Monday of the month is our workshop where we discuss most of the items that we'll have on our agenda this evening, and that gives us time to uh, gain additional information or do more research before we come into tonight's meeting uh, ready to vote on the items that are on the agenda. So the meeting's called to order. I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Jennifer Metzger with the Pregnancy Care Center if she would come to the podium. She's going to offer our prayer and, and share some information with us about a uh, project that they're working on. And then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Councilman Josh Reynolds to, uh, to offer our uh, pledge. So Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Um, I just want to take a quick minute to tell you the ministry I'm with. I'm here with the Pregnancy Care Center. If you're not aware of what we do, we see women who are in unexpected pregnancies. And so we offer services for them. We have medical services. Um, we do ultrasounds. And we also do options consultation, decision support. We want to get them plugged in. As you know, and while you're here, we have an amazing community. And so we want to make sure these ladies know that they have a village behind them and that they have the support that they need. So that's what we do at the Pregnancy Care Center. We are a nonprofit, which leads me to point two. We do fundraising. And MJ actually was able to help us out last year. We started a new thing. We've been doing a banquet up until COVID happened. And so after, you know, COVID kind of lifted and we were getting back to doing some normal things and getting out in the community, we decided to do something more creative. And so we come up with the idea of the mass Singer. Um, some of you maybe have seen that on TV. And basically, it's the concert style. You've got six contestants. Their identity is unknown. And so um, the, the point of it is for the judges to unmask and figure out who the contestants are. So we're going to have that this Friday night at 7 at First Baptist Ministry Center. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, tickets are available. I've left some flyers. I've left some information. Um, and you can get tickets online, which it explains that, or you can come by the office. We are literally about across the road. We're on 4th Street between South Georgia Bank and Nathan Johnson's um, attorney office. But so we've got that going on Friday night. We'd love to see you there. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. But um, I would love to pray for you guys as you start the meeting tonight. I think the most important thing we can do is pray. Um, we need discernment, we need wisdom, we need all those things. I'm so blessed to be a part of Tiff County and the things that are going on. I know that we're constantly trying to serve. I've had the pleasure to be in school with MJ and, and do things with him, and I just love the heart that Tiff County has, and so it's an honor to be here tonight. And So I would just like to pray and, and bless you guys. God, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity just to be here, to come together. God, we know that we're more powerful when we're together, and we know, Lord, that you will lead us and guide us in spirit and truth. God, I ask that in the days to come and the decisions to be made, that you would just, um, just have your way, God, that you would just give us direction. Your word tells us, Lord, that when we come before you, that we can find those things. And so, Lord, I, just, I pray for peace. I pray for just all the wonderful things, Lord, that you have for Tiff County. I know, God, that there are some great things in store. And I just bless the people who are here tonight. I ask that you just be with them and be with their families. I thank you for their heart to serve. And, um, Lord, it's just such an honor. We love you, and we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us that we do not deserve. And, God, we just ask that you be with us tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jennifer. If you all please rise. <coughs> Thank you, Josh. And Jessica, thank you for the work that you do um, for the women in our community and for Jessica. Uh, Jennifer. Je Jennifer, I was calling you Jessica. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at Jessica and, say, and thinking, Jennifer, we just want to say thank you for the work that you do for the women and children of our community. And um, I know your website is down here on this flyer. Is that to accept donations and things like that as well? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here this evening and for that lovely prayer. And again, thank you for the work that you do. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. 
All right, and thank you again, Josh, for leading that uh, pledge. All right, gentlemen, you have the agenda in front of you, and uh, so if there is no change to the agenda, I will accept a motion to accept, um, to accept the agenda as presented. Make a motion. Okay, thank you, MJ. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, also in your packet that was emailed to you last week, we have the minutes from our meetings. Uh, you've had a chance to review those. Is there a motion to accept or do we have any changes to make to those minutes that were submitted? Move to accept. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? A second. All right, thank you, Lester. So I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, public comments. Uh, we do ask that anyone who would like to address the council to sign up for that. Jessica, is there anyone that has signed up for a public comment or anyone that didn't know you were to sign up if you wanted to speak? It's not, okay, we're good. Okay, so we will move on. All right, we have several presentations this evening. I'm gonna call on Jeff West with ESG. He's gonna talk about the James E. Dove Memorial Scholarship Award. And we have Mr. Ernest Dove with us here this evening. So thank you, Ernest, for being here. And uh, Jeff, tell us what we've got going on with our scholarships. Thank you, Mayor. I'm glad to be here to uh, award the annual James E. Dove Memorial Scholarship. Um, this scholarship has been awarded to Tiff County High School students um, to further their education since 2002. Um, Mr. Dove worked with the city of Tifton from 1959 and retired in 1986. Um, he actually started the gas system in Tifton, and I, I've done a lot of research today looking through laser fishing. Oh, and he traveled all over the state looking at different gas systems, trying to come up with a great system, and, and he did. I mean, we we support everybody in this town with gas that wants it, and it's a great system because of what Mr. Dove done. Um, like you said, uh, Ernest here is here. He is Mr. Dove's son. Glad to always have him here. Um, we've got two recipients this year. Uh, Blake Chambliss, she couldn't be here tonight, and Caleb Della Cerna. Uh, Caleb, if you wanna come up. Um, these uh, applicants, are, are looked over by the city manager, myself, and staff to, uh, we read the every single um, essay that comes in. They're not only chose for, the, for their academic achievement, but their community involvement and how, how gas affects the, the community and the, the people that live in the community. And uh, I'm proud to present Caleb De La Serna this year as one of our recipients. And uh, congratulations. And uh, one thing, uh, these, these two gentlemen over here, you may want to talk to him after this is over with. Caleb wants to go into finance. Oh, he, he's okay. going to do, do two years at ABAC first and then plans to go to UGA to get a degree in finance. So uh, good luck with that and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, you Caleb. Caleb, do you want to say anything? Or? Um, I actually have a really funny story about this scholarship essay. Okay. So it was about four hours before it was due. It's the typical high school mentality of doing work right before it's due. That's not and, just high school. That's on the city council, yeah, too, yesterday. trust me. <laughs> and I was debating on actually finishing the essay. I hadn't started it. I, was, I already finished all my other ones, and it was getting pretty late. But I thought, I might as well just write it. So I look at the prompt to see that I need to know um, the benefits of natural gas and how it affects my community. And this is something that I actually haven't learned necessarily yet in school, but I do know how to write an essay because that's <laughs> something I've been practicing. So I decided to take a, like an alternative approach to it. So I wrote about how it benefits our essay, but in the eyes of someone of a, like a form of satire. So essentially, I criticized the use of natural gas by using absurd examples, such as how it will it will um, provides like a sort of way for people to come together because it say it causes problems for envi our environment. This gives an opportunity for people to come together to fix those problems, mm -hmm. saying that thanks to natural gas ruining the environment, we have people put to work to help our environment. And I continued that sort of mocking mentality throughout my essay. And I, after I submitted it, I was like, um, that's not getting, that's not getting, <laughs> that's not getting picked. And I come, school next week and here I, I um, 
I earned the scholarship, and I was I was so shocked myself. So I really appreciate you for selecting me for the scholarship. Well, your your resume is is in our packet. It's quite impressive. So congratulations, and and to your family um, for. Uh, your success. Well, there's no question you will go far with whatever you choose to do. Thank you. And um, we're very, very proud of you uh, participating. And even if it was a tongue-in-cheek kind of backdoor uh, way to do it, that's fine. It, 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 it won. And so we're, we congratulate you. And Ernest, we just want to say thank you to um, the work that your father did. I mean, uh, like Jeff said, he, he traveled all over looking for a, a, you know, how to set up a gas department that would serve a community and here we are all these years later and, and that's still happening so I'm going to look at 20 years of scholarships that have been given out that's impressive as well so um, your, your father truly left an amazing legacy that we're thankful for one of the other things that he done that he got awards for was having the safest gas system. that's important too there part. you go Jack <laughs> thank you Jack Very much. Well, thank y'all so much, Jeff. Thank you for that presentation, and um, we're excited about the uh, the future, and, and know that you'll you'll get far with uh, with your your studies. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a proclamation declaring Motorcycle Awareness Month, and I'm just going to read this into the record, and then we'll be sending this to the um, the Georgia uh, Motorist Awareness Program. But our proclamation uh, says, whereas the members of the Gold Wing Road Riders Association Motorist Awareness Program and the um, acronym MAP of Georgia and other organizations continually promote motorcycle safety, education, and awareness programs to the general public and to the motorist community of Georgia. And whereas motorcycle riding is a popular form of recreation and transportation for thousands of people across the state and the nation, it is crucial that citizens of our city and state be aware of motorcycles on the roadways and recognize the importance of motorcycle safety. State and motorcycle organizations across this country will be conducting a variety of activities to promote motorist awareness and safely sharing the road with motorcycles and will be reminding riders to be more visible to others. And the motorcyclists of Georgia have contributed countless volunteer hours to their communities and all motorists should join the GWRRA map of Georgia in actively promoting the safe operation of motorcycles as well as promoting motorcycle safety, education, and awareness. Now, therefore, I, Julie Smith, Mayor of the City of Tifton, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2022 as Motorcycle Awareness Month and encourage motorcycle awareness and safe motoring for all. And I have signed it, and Jessica has signed it as our city clerk, so that makes it official. It has our city uh, seal on it. So, uh, so Jessica, I'll let you have this back after the meeting, and then we can send that to the appropriate party. So do want to remind uh, our community to always be safe on the road, but particularly uh, with motorcyclists and bicyclists and those uh, who share the road with us. So, uh, so we're, we're, we're proud to, uh, to be able to help with that effort. All right, uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, something that I know several of you find extremely exciting. Uh, that's the FY 2021 audit. So I'm going to call on Miller Edwards with Malden and Jenkins to make that presentation. Exciting, huh? Yes. Well, I, don't, I don't have our audits usually referred to as exciting. Can't you see the exciting. excitement? Oh, yeah. Um, I appreciate you all having us here this afternoon, this evening. Um, just kind of give you a recap of where we are. This is the June 30, 2021 audit. Um, it was prepared and issued several months ago, um, but we were asked to come down here today to visit. We've also met just now for about an hour with the finance committee and management and talked about some of the details within the audit. We had a good, healthy discussion about all kind of things when it comes to the finances here at the city of Tifton. But with that being said, I'm only hit, hit highlights. I know I'm an accountant and I like numbers, but that doesn't mean everybody in this room does. So. What I'm gonna to try to do is, is present to you just the highlights about what, what do I see? What would I wanna know if I were in your shoes? And first thing I think of when I look at Tipton is, overall, you're a pretty good size government. A lot of people may not realize that, but you're about 140 million when you look at total assets. I mean, that's everything. I mean, we're talking about your cash, your receivables, your infrastructure, everything under the sun that comes under the heading of what an asset is. Here at the city of Tiffin, you've got about 140 million. That's looking across all funds, not just one fund, that's every fund that you've got rolled together. You've got about 27 million worth of liabilities. 
to offset those 140 million in assets. That gives you a good healthy equity position of about 113 million. Included in those liabilities are some long-term uh, liabilities. You know as well as I do probably that you've got a long-term uh, landfill liability on there, about nine and a half million dollars. It's gonna be funded over time as you go forward with the closure and post-closure of that landfill. You've also got uh, about 5.9 million in long-term debt, like revenue bonds, capital leases, all those kind of things that you have to put on the books. You've also got about 6.8 million, or about seven million of a net pension liability. And what I mean by that is, when the standards came out about six or seven years ago, you had to start putting this liability on your books. Before that, you didn't have to. And what you have is you've got your actuarial liability, I think it's around 33 million, and you've got about 26 million of assets to offset that. So the 33 minus the 26 gives you a $7 million net pension liability that you've got. That's about 80% funded. I think I, in talking to management just now an hour ago, I think it's up to about 82% as we sit here today. And again, I just recommend that you continue to kind of move in that direction that you've been going. A few years ago, you were all the way down into the 50s as far as that goes. That was really, really on the low side. Now at 80, 82, that's a good place to be, but I recommend you continue to strive to do everything you can to grow that to, you know, if you get up to 100%, what that says to anyone is, you're assuming that responsibility today. You're providing resources today and not asking the next generation to do so. That'd be a great thing if you could do that. Um, when I, again, look at the entity-wide, everything, water, sewer, general fund, SPLOST, all things that come under the heading of the city, you all have about $38.5 million worth of revenues this past year. You spent about $29.5 million, giving you a bottom line of $9.1 million. Well, before anybody says, well, why do we have a bottom line of $9.1 million? You have to. You need to. Because out of that, you also spend about $3.3 on capital outlay, enhancements to your system, you know, vehicles, equipment, facilities, whatever it might be. And you also had to pay down principal on your debt of about four and a half million. That comes up to be about uh, 7.9, we'll just say $8 million. If you didn't have that 9 million, how would we fund the 8 million? So I, wanna, I just don't want that to get lost in, in the communication. Yes, you had a good bottom line, but you needed every ounce of it. Especially if you're gonna go forward with the continued growth and plans that you've got, you need to have a little margin on that number, and that's what you've got is a little margin on top of that number. So I think that looks really good. Um, when you look at the general fund, which is the heart and soul of any government, not just the city of Tiffin, but any city, county, board of education, any of these type of governments, the general fund is the heart and soul. Your general fund's in good shape. I'd say you've got a, uh, you've got a good situation there. You've got a good, strong fund balance, which is what you want to have at June 30th. You know, if you were 930 year in, you'd have a lot smaller fund balance because you, you know, property taxes just around the corner. At June 30th, you need a strong fund balance so that you can weather July, August, September, October, potentially November into December, depending on when the tax bills get issued and when they're paid. So I think you've got a very good looking fund balance there and it's something you should be quite pleased with. That took time to get there and, and you've done just that. Um, you've got other funds like SPLOS 4, excuse me, SPLOS 5 and SPLOS 6 and other funds that are all looking good and healthy right where they're supposed to be. You're collecting funds like you're supposed to and you've got projects that are on the horizon that you're gonna be spending those monies on. So again, that's going real well. Um, you're, you've got some proprietary business type activities as well. You know, water, sewer, gas, solid waste, and you've got the theater. Those are your five proprietary type, business type activities. They're all looking very good as well right now. So again, I think that's something you would wanna know. You've got good, strong operating cash flows. And for those that don't maybe follow what I'm saying when I say cash flows, remember the dot-com fever about 20 some odd years ago? Anybody invest in any of these dot-coms and they're showing all this great bottom line? But what happened to them? A lot of them went away because the cash wasn't there, okay? Your business type activities need to have good, strong pods of operating cash flows, and they do, okay? So that's a good thing to walk away from. Um, one other thing I'll mention when you look at the overall audit, this past year you took some CARES money in, and because of that you had to have a, what we call a single audit. You had about 1.2 million of monies that came through the state from the Fed, okay? And when you have more than $750,000 of any of these type of activities, you have to have a special compliance audit to make sure that you dotted all, T, uh, dotted all I's and crossed all T's. I'm happy to say you did just that. And, and before anybody says, well, that's no big deal, the rules in federal government change daily. 
Um, it's, it's been unbelievable watching this COVID situation, all the funds that come through. You're told on one day what you can spend it on, then the next day they say you can't spend it on. It's constantly going back and forth. And so for your management to stay on top of the, of the situation all the way through its usage and all the way through the audit is a commendable act as well. So I want to say kudos there. Um, the only other thing I've got left to, to visit with you on is we did have some compliance and con internal control reports. We did have some findings that we said, you know, need to be worked on, need to be improved upon. They all related to adjustments that we had to propose as your auditor. Uh, nothing that we saw that was a breakdown in internal controls per se, but we just need to make sure that we have the adjustments that we do need to be done monthly, quarterly, whatever the situation needs to be. They need to be done timely and be done right and not wait to the end of the year to be trying to adjust something that may have happened 10 months earlier. So that's our suggestions to you all, is just kind of work on that. We've had some good dialogue with management, like I said, just even this afternoon, but even a couple of weeks ago, Justin came down here and met with some of the people in your finance department. And I think we're on the same page about what needs to be done. And uh, I feel good about that. So again, that's what I wanted to share with you all this evening. Just uh, I'm here for any questions you might have. Please feel free to toss something my way. Jack, do you have any comments you'd like to make? I know you have really <coughs> studied this and, and yeah. been part uh, of these meetings. I guess the two statements at Miller Media, one, we're in good shape, and two, there was no breakdown in internal controls. Right. From a financial standpoint, that internal controls are, your, are, are the thing. Right. You have breakdown there, you've got a problem. When the auditor says there was no breakdown, I mean, you're going to have these comments, what we always refer to as comments and stuff. That, that's just part of the, the game. Uh, nothing from a prior year. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, we're in good shape. Excellent. Yep. All right, I know the, the packets are on our uh, here at our place. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, did you have any questions of Miller? I know you're, you probably really hasn't had a chance to look through it thoroughly. No, but, um, no questions at the moment. Yeah. Let, okay. let me explain what you do have. I, okay. I kind of went past that, and I shouldn't have. You were passed out two documents. One of them is your actual audited financial statements. Mm -hmm. That's the thicker of the two documents. <laughs> the other one is something we do above and beyond what we're required to do. We call it our auditor's discussion analysis. And what we try to do in that is try to bring it down to earth, not talking accounting ease so much. <laughs> and we try to put it in perspective that everybody out there can understand. And that's the purpose of that primarily. You know, at the end of the day, if you don't really want to get into the numbers, I'd say just read parts of it and you'll fall asleep about that fast. <laughs> so put it next to your bedside table and you'll be good to go. <laughs> so. Okay. And obviously, if, if, as we peruse through this and, and have any discussion amongst ourselves, we could certainly contact Absolutely. you if we have questions. Absolutely. Or anything, so. We can be down here lickety split, no problem. There you go. Okay. All right. So, no questions, gentlemen? You good? Thank you so okay. much, Miller. Thank you. We appreciate it just quickly add uh, yes first um, thanks to Justin uh, and Miller uh, for all their work this this you know this again this this COVID and how audits happened it, it's been quite the challenge so thank you for your support and and uh, what you've helped us with and then most specifically uh, Larry Lawrence and Dana Chancy for delivering uh, this this budget and audit it's very complex and we run a we run a pretty sizable company if you will from utilities and then the general fund, obviously, it's government. People say government's not business. I disagree. So they have worked extremely hard. And what, where we were four years ago uh, to where we are now, uh, it's, it's been pretty bumpy. But I could honestly say that um, Dana has uh, carried us through a, a, a big, big storm mm -hmm. with regards to finances. And then Larry, uh, with the addition of Larry almost a year ago, uh, he and, and Dana have done a tremendous job with collecting these finances and making sure that we are balanced and uh, that we're proud uh, for what we can present to you and for the taxpayers because uh, this, this means a lot and we take it seriously. So I wanted to thank both of them and the finance department for all the work. So Larry, Dana, thank you for, for all your work. Absolutely. Here, here. <laughs> we totally agree. <laughs> so thank you to, uh, to Larry and Dana for that. So, um, thank you. And, and Miller, thank you for your presentation sure this evening. Yeah. So, um, we are all very cognizant that this is the public's money. It's not our personal money. And, and uh, we take that very seriously. So thank you. Thank you yes. for your, your help with the audit. All right. Thank okay. You. All right. Moving along. Uh, item number four under old business is our ordinance. To amend the city charter, uh, we did have to change our election districts to be consistent with the 2020 census, 
And um, this is our second reading. Is there anything we need to address there, Rob? Just just note it and move on. So we're not voting on anything this evening, then. No, you were voting yeah. on it tonight. This second is the second. Reading. Oh, this is the second. Okay, so this will be <laughs> Okay, want to make sure I was following the rules. Okay, so uh, so that um, that ordinance is in our packet. Uh, like I said, this is our second reading. So we've looked at this uh, twenty ways to Sunday and the exhibits are there to show the uh, the new voting districts. So I will take a motion concerning that. I'll make a motion. Okay, thank you, Josh. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Lester. So we have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. All right, under new business, uh, we um, talked last week, or excuse me, two weeks ago at our workshop about the uh, Georgia Ini Initiative for Community Housing, or GIC, letter of support, and um, Jessica presented that information to us, and uh, that is in your packet as well, so I'll take a motion concerning providing that letter of support for that project. I move to approve. Okay, thank you, no, Jack. Second. All right, thank you, MJ. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, <coughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. All right, uh, the next item is our ordinance providing for municipal, municipal court. And uh, Pete gave a very thorough presentation on um, the failures to appear uh, in the municipal court prosecutions at our workshop. Pete, anything you need to update us on before we uh, approve this? No, it's, it's, it's well intact and very okay. much needed. Okay, that ordinance is in your packet, so you've had a chance to review that. So I will take a motion concerning the uh, failure to appear and court prosecutions for municipal court. Make a motion. All right, thank you, Josh. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Next item uh, is our to amend our code of ordinances regarding nuisances. And um, I know um, that was presented to us um, at our workshop as well. And that ordinance is in your packet. It just kind of cleans up uh, what a nuisance is and gives our code enforcement a little more teeth to be able to do what they need to do so that they can carry out uh, taking care of our city. So that is in your packet. I'll take a motion concerning that. A motion to approve. Okay, thank you, Lester. Is there a second? Second. All right, thank you, MJ. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next item uh, is an ordinance to establish a 90-day moratorium on the construction, establishment, or permitting of PDO's planned development overlays. Rob, what you want to present that information? Uh, yeah, Mayor Bigley, you know, we've had uh, several discussions about PDO's, mm -hmm. and uh, in our last workshop, we, I think everybody is pretty much in agreement that they can be useful uh, as a tool as far as zoning and, and development. But I think that at this point in time, you know, because of the past experiences that we've had, we need to tighten that up, uh, particularly to make sure that if a development, you know, if we do a PDO, that it's timely initiated, that it's timely finished, and we have, you know, uh, the teeth in order to make sure it gets done according to the plan. So uh, what uh, this 90-day moratorium will give us an opportunity to kind of look at what other folks have done and uh, try to tighten up, you know, our PDOs, so moving forward, if we have one, uh, we can make sure it's done right. Okay. All right, we've talked a lot about the PDO, so that shouldn't be a surprise uh, to anybody uh, that will need some time to explore those before we approve any new ones. So um, I will take a motion concerning that 90-day moratorium for PDOs. Move to approve. All right, thank you, Jack. Is there a second? Second. All right, thank you, Josh. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next item is a resolution designating the Arts in Black at, uh, event as a festival. And uh, Ms. Melissa Hughes and Layla Dollison are here. Um, this was not on our work session, so we've really not had a chance to review this. Um, Melissa and Layla, do you want to just present the information on the, the date and what's going on? And, and um, it's always nice to have Commissioner Hughes with us. The, uh, the future president of the County Commissioners of Georgia. That is so fabulous. I am very excited and thank you, Mayor and Board. This is something very new for us as far as what we're doing with the arts. We've never had to come before you all. We usually just have it. Have it, yeah. 
Um, in November, November the, November the 23rd of last year, we filled out all the paperwork with the Ms. Martha. And I was thinking that was all we had to do. Then you all came up with this bright idea to have alcohol. <laughs> so what do we decide to do? We decide we want to have alcohol. Uh -huh. We didn't know that we needed to do anything other okay. because we, had already, we already had this the in other place. Uh -huh. So then Jessica calls us on last Wednesday and say, uh, you all cannot do that. <laughs> and we started jumping through hoops and got everything that Jessica required of us. So we are here to ask if we can be a festival and have alcohol and our vendors. Okay. And I know um, enough about the festival ordinance. Um, I know that um, there is a um, portion of that that just says that either Tourism Association or City needs to be a sponsor of the event. And our Tourism Association is certainly a sponsor of the event. And this, it's in a city park. It yes. will be in Fullwood Park. Um, so uh, so I, I think we checked those boxes. I don't see any um, issues. I know Pete didn't see any issues on that. So. Um, so I'll open it up for any questions you may have or a, a motion concerning the um, approval of the uh, Arts and Black. Be business. nice, Jack. I'm, I'm just trying to come up with a good Be question. nice. <laughs> so, 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 something really got your question, but yeah. I wouldn't do that for you. What is that? Right, <laughs> you. But ju just so that I know that's in our packet, uh, do you want to tell us about the dates of the event, the times, and, and so, some details before we call for a vote and tell us what's going on? Okay, on May the 6th, we are having arts under the stars and that is where we have a saxophone player and our very own dj <laughs> mr garfield that will be there and harold e thomas as the saxophone player and we're asking that you come out and enjoy a awesome night under the stars on the seventh that is where we will be in the park starting at one o'clock and we will have our poetry competition mm -hmm. and that is from school age on up to high school and you will not believe some of the talent that we have to come before us. And if anyone is interested in that, they will reach out to Ms. Clara Gray. And then after that, we will have live entertainment. Mood Doctor, they will be there as well. So we have all kind of entertainment that is coming. We have a kids zone, a petting zoo. We have a lot going on. That sounds great. Yes. That sounds really good. Well, thank you for that. Um, I'll open the floor for any questions of these nice ladies, or we can. I'll take a motion concerning their uh, their event. I just appreciate the time. I mean, I, I was involved for years with Love Affairs, so I know what it takes to put these things together, and I thank you for taking your time to do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. A motion to approve. Okay. Thank you, Lester. We have a motion. Is there a second? And a second. All right. Thank you, MJ. So, motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. y'all. Thank y'all very much. <laughs> very good. Hey, Melissa, is there a number, like if someone is watching on uh, the, the meeting on YouTube or they hear about it, is there a number to call for information or a website? Where do we, where do we direct people yes, to? Yes, they can reach me at 229-326-0241 or Tipton Arts and Black. Okay. Uh -huh. Dot com. TiptonArtsAndBlack.com. Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving along, the next item is just some uh, housekeeping. It's a resolution authorizing uh, new signers at Truist Bank. Uh, so, um, Larry, any updates we need to know on that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor and Council, uh, this is just a resolution that I had Pete and myself to, to one Truist bank account that we have. Okay. Uh, we did this back August of last year, but they misplaced oh, no. <laughs> all the signature cards, okay. so we're doing it again here. Okay, no problem. All right, so I'll take a motion concerning that resolution. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, so we have... Give it to him. Give it to him? All right, MJ. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> so thank you. All right, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, financial report. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, just to give you uh, uh, the financials through March of this year, we're uh, still doing great in all the funds. Uh, if you look at the general fund, 
Revenues are twelve million six ninety seven. Expenditures ten million five sixty four. With net revenues over expenditures, expenditures of two million one thirty three. So the, that's still doing great. Uh, the water fund is doing good. Uh, revenues two million five eighty three. Expenditures one million seven ninety eight. And uh, net revenues over expenditures seven hundred eighty four thousand. So. And then the uh, sewer fund the revenues three million oh thirty one. Expenditures two million six ninety one, with net revenues over expenditures of three hundred thirty nine thousand. Gas fund total revenues four million three oh three, total expenditures three million six seventy eight, and net revenues over expenditures of six hundred twenty five thousand. And then solid waste total revenues two million nine twenty, total expenditures two million five twelve, and then net revenues over expenditures of four hundred eight thousand. So. So all the funds are doing good. Uh, just a continuation from last year, like Miller was saying, we had a good year last year and we're continuing it that this year, so. Excellent, did, okay. Did anybody the, have any uh, questions? Those, that report is in our packet. Any questions, gentlemen of Larry? No. Good, Thank okay. You. All right, good okay. job, thank all you. Right. Thank, thank, you. thank you again. All right, gentlemen, next item is our board report, and you can see in our packet uh, there are a couple of openings and there are some applicants. Um, in Keep Tift Beautiful, Caroline Owens at 615 Potts Road has uh, submitted an application for KTB, and KTB has recommended appointing her. Um, we have an applicant for planning and zoning and for historic preservation. Have either of those boards met with those applicants to make a recommendation? Okay. Um, yes. For planning and zoning. Yeah. And Jenny Harper is currently on the board. Okay. So those are just two that we have coming up. So the only one that, you know, just kind of went through that process. I just wanted to let y'all know those are right. one vacancy and one okay. um, uh, term endings coming up. But Caroline Owens is a, a new one. Um, that would take over that vacancy, and KTB has recommended um, approving that. Her, okay. if y'all want to move forward. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, and vote on that if y'all are okay with that. So um, we'll need to wait until we get um, the other applicants have met with um, or made a recommendation on Historic Preservation Commission and on planning and zoning as per our policy. So, uh, so I'll take a motion concerning Caroline on KTB. I'll make a motion. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Boy, y'all are just like, woo, woo, woo. It's like stereo seconds. All right, we're going to let this one go to Lester, okay, MJ? <laughs> All right, so we have motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, anything else we need to know about boards? Jessica, that's that's pretty much yeah. it. Okay. All right, very don't good. Have any, I don't have, you know, it starts over a new year, so a lot of those applicants that turned in last year, you know, our policy says that they're on file for one year, so if y'all know right. anybody... Um, I believe we also have a, a zoning board of appeals, but I don't have any current applications to fill that vacancy. At okay. This time. Okay. All right. So, uh, for anyone um, who is interested in serving on a board, uh, it's a pretty simple process. You just come meet with Jessica, or she can email the application. And then, uh, per our policy, we do ask the board that you're interested in to meet with you to see uh, what your strengths are, or maybe what your talents are, or education or experience that could benefit them. And then they make that recommendation. Uh, but we'd be happy to, uh, to talk with anyone who's interested in serving on a board. Um, all right. Um, Let's see, Peter. You in your manager's report? You going to talk about Georgia City's week, um, or is we, that Emily? I was probably Emily could uh, update us if. Okay. If you're ready. It's on Georgia City's is on our um, I online. I just provided the reminder. Okay. It's coming up. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I won't so forget it. Okay. They're very good. Okay. Unless you just wanted to say something, Emily, you good? Okay. Any any changes we need to know about yet? No. Okay. Okay. We'll, just we'll, we'll get updates as the okay. week progresses. May, you just remember that on Tuesday the 26th, we'll be at My Lady Bakery at the crack of dawn. I don't know who's scheduled that. Scheduled I don't yeah. know. <laughs> 715. 715. I don't get over out the fence up what are y'all thinking? That's okay. Jackson we'll be tired, there. Because that's <laughs> how we're all. Jackson tired. I don't see the other We'll be there. I'll be, I'll be there. Baby, I'll be there. <laughs> 
And uh, so Tuesday the 26th, things will kick off, and then we've got a week's worth of activities, and so certainly invite the public to join in, and we'll be posting more, I'm sure, on our social media and talking about that with the press. All right, um, Pete, City Manager Report. Yeah, just two things, thanks, Mayor. Uh, if you have not been by the Youth Center, I encourage you to visit that. The walls are up, and it, it, it looks like a building, and it won't be long before they're, um, they're they're putting the uh, touches on the roof and starting to dry in, so it it's, uh, really looks good. And you can see the footprint of, you know, what's was conceptually done on paper now is is taking um, shape, and it won't again. It, would, it won't be too long before uh, it starts looking like a, a real building. And then uh, we talked a lot about budgets and audits tonight, but we're rounding the corner. Larry and I are just about done with this year's budget, and and we'll be planning uh, the budget work session with you here very soon. So I'll send that out as soon as we're finalized on our end and we'll, we'll plan for that when it's convenient that's all i have okay all right all right gentlemen do you, you might like to go first on your comments i'll go okay i had a resident i called pete about he reached out to me and he was taking some recycled goods uh to the county location mm -hmm. it's on pecan street correct and after discussion with the gentleman that was working there, he asked him, who picks up your trash? And he said, well, Ryla does. He said, well, you, you can't dump your stuff here. And he was very upset about the whole situation. And he also took a picture of a sign that says, residents of Tifton and Tiff County. Mm -hmm. So he sent all that information to me. I returned talking to Pete about that. But that's an issue, and that's a problem. I mean, we're having to deal with recycling the best we can right now. But we need to clarify that everybody, all residents in Tiffin or Tiff County, can use that location. Right. And for him to turn that gentleman away, that's, that's very disturbing. Who does who did who does that person there work for? Does that person work for the county or for Golden? That, that's know. that's a Golden employee. Huh? That's a, a Golden environmental employee. Okay. I, I went today because yes. and you know all that that's going. And so I'm you know me I'm gonna go take my recycling and. See if I can have a problem. Well, I went at 3.30 and it was going to lunch sign. So I'm thinking, who goes to lunch at 3.30? But okay. So I went back about 15 minutes later and there was a, a lady there. Very nice. She just, she um, wanted my name and address. And was that in the city or was that in the county? And I almost, my usual self said, well, we're all in the county. But I didn't. I just said, it's in the city. Uh, and she said, okay. Told me where to, where to take it. So. Uh, there, but there are people that are being turned away, yeah. and yeah. I don't know how we get it to the people who don't put up with that. You know, I mean, I don't want somebody to start a fight, but I'm about to put on Facebook my phone number and say, if you get turned away, call me. We'll deal with it right then. Uh, but I know one of your people, the, the keys, uh, uh, they were under the impression, they had come to that meeting only in March, they were then under the impression of that Richard said you couldn't come. And I explained to them that that's not what was said. And regardless of what was said, that ain't the truth. Uh, because we all pay for it. And right. Let's that, be clear. That, yeah. Just to remind people, that service is paid for from the county's general fund, of which every citizen of Tifton, resident of Tifton, pays into. Yep. So you are paying for that service to be able to, right. to use it. And I do want to remind people, too, the the um, suspension of recycling is just suspension. We are going to be uh, at our retreat. Um, I know that that's something that's very important to all of us, looking at ways to make sure that we have recycling. Um, no guarantee of how it's going to be yet. We haven't explored all the options. You know, what are the options for curbside? What are the options for drop-off points? So suspension is not cancellation that's a different that's, word <laughs> so i know that it's inconvenient and it's as an avid recycler which i know everyone on this this commission and council does recycle um it's important to us and important that we take care of our environment and everything so i do want to assure the public that we are looking at every option that we can yeah. come up with to to make this feasible well, and all, all we've suspended is curbside, curbside recycling. we haven't you know, right we have not suspended recycling in Tiff County. That's yeah. right. As you said, right. we're all paying for recycling. Now you have to take you it down take there. It. Yeah. And it becomes 100% recyclable versus what we were getting today, two people, people with two trash cans. So we've just suspended curbside. Right. Take advantage of places that do take recycle. And, right. you know, if you're serious about it, you'll put it in your car and you'll drive down there. 
What else, Josh? You got anything else? Um, no, that was, that was, okay. that was it. Okay, thank you. Lester? Uh, I'll be <clears throat> very brief. I just want to um, thank Pete personally for his timely response to some um, concerns of some of the constituents in District 3. Um, his professionalism and timely manner was, uh, was uh, exceptional for me and uh, kept me out of hot water. So I want to thank you <laughs> <laughs> for your timely response. But we had our uh, boots on, though. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, we had water boots on. Huh? So yeah, there you go. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, I just, I'll, so we'll just kind of go in, in order if that's okay with y'all. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we are celebrating this year our sesquicentennial, our 150th anniversary of Tifton. And that's all of Tifton. It's not just downtown, it's not just City Hall, it's all of Tifton. And we have a lot to celebrate, and a lot has changed over that 150 years. Jack, I think you were there when it started. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway. Amazing what you did. <laughs> but I, um, I'm, you have a little flyer here for one of the events that is happening. Um, it's the Wiregrass Ball, which is a farm-to-table dinner that will happen on May the 14th at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture, or the Agorama, as it will always be to me. Uh, it's going to be a really fun event. There's live music. Um, the um, ABAC actually has a program that um, works, yeah, as you know, that's an agricultural college as well as, I mean, they do all sorts of things, but they actually have um, Georgia-grown um, programs and different things like that that we'll be able to participate in. There'll be uh, all kinds of really cool souvenirs and things that you'll get that evening. Um, if you'd like to buy a ticket, uh, the tickets are $55. But it, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but it will be well worth it. It'll be a fun night of entertainment and celebration. And you can get those tickets at wiregrassballtifton.eventbrite.com. And uh, this is in partnership with the Tifton Tiff County Tourism Association, the Outreach Marketing Group. So lots of special events going on. We're working on, I was just talking with Lester about some, some sites in, in his district. We're working on um, tours of the community where you can kind of a self-guided historic tour. Randy Chambers is working on that. There's several different programs that will be going on throughout the year to celebrate all of Tifton. We'll recognize uh, various um, segments such as different industries and different people in the community and how our community uh, has developed and grown over the years. So just if you're on social media you can follow um, they do have a, a sesquicentennial page just go in there and search for the tourism page Tifton Tiff County Tourism and it, it'll link you there um, so uh, so really invite the community to come out and celebrate 150 years. Jack? Um, my comment would follow up on Josh with the uh, Recycling and the fact that I went, they met myself. So. Okay. MJ? Uh, no comments at this time. Well, tell uh, us about your baby. <laughs> he's just growing, he's little baby Milo is growing. He's growing, he's big, uh, you know, he's up to 10 Keeping pounds. you up at night? You know, yeah, keeping me up. <laughs> the little guy came out 4 pounds, 11 ounces, but he's up to 10 now. So. That's awesome. Congrats. Uh, That's came, great. Uh, what, um, six weeks early. Yeah. So he's supposed to be here in March. He came in January. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's just a blessing, you know, got to see. Didn't think he going to uh, play Easter, but we got a, his first Easter this time, and he dressed up like a bunny. So. He's cute as he can be. Nobody's happier than Tiffany and George Mill. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but, Grandma's uh, happy. Yeah, other than that, um, everything is, is good. Uh, I'm proud of everybody working hard for the city of Tipton, and that uh, youth center is, is, is up and rolling pretty good. So mm -hmm. if you hadn't gotten back there, like Pete said, you need to go by. Uh, and the board is working hard. We did get our meeting this past month. Uh, I think everybody was Easter ready, so we missed that. But um, we are going to meet on site and go do a walkthrough. We had a great meeting past time. We, uh, we went through a lot of our um, interior, picked out all our colors and flooring and different things like that. It was a very exciting meeting for everyone. Um, and Miss Tiff was involved. And um, we're still working hard on with her as well to get some of that curriculum and stuff going yeah. for the kids. So. Everything's in a, in a moving forward situation for the URA board and that uh, the youth center. So excellent. Uh, that's good. So. Excellent. This is all your district. That's the district. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's exciting. So yeah. Let's good things. It. Good things happening. All right, gentlemen. Anything else we need to go over? All right. Seeing no further business to come before the council, we are adjourned. Everybody.